Hello and welcome back to another Geo Explaining video. And today we will continue with Chapter 1 Landscapes. In the first paragraph, you have learned how mountains are formed, how mountains have both sedimentary rocks and igneous rocks, and how fossils, which are in the sedimentary rocks, end up on top of the mountains. And you also learned how young mountains are different than old mountains, by how they look. Today, we will look into the forces that shape the landscape. Remember how young mountains look very different, more steep and tall, compared to old mountains, which are more smooth and gradual. These young mountains have way more relief, differences in height, compared to the old mountain. This is because of the outside forces. The geographical term for these outside forces that shape the landscape is exogenic forces. One of these exogenic forces is called weathering. Weathering is the breaking down of rocks under the influence of weather and flora. Meaning that because of the weather, how much it's raining or the temperature, rocks can break down. But also because of the plants around us and the trees, rocks break down. But in which ways does weathering happen? And where can you find these different types of weathering? Try to answer these questions so we can discuss them in class. You need to know two types of weathering. First, there is mechanical weathering, and on the other hand, there is chemical weathering. I will first explain to you the difference between chemical and mechanical weathering. Then I will go over the different types of mechanical weathering that we need to know. And then I will also explain how chemical weathering works and give an example of each. So first, what is the difference between chemical weathering and mechanical weathering? With mechanical weathering, the rocks break down, but the composition of the rock stays the same. It does not change. But with chemical weathering, the composition of the rock changes. So the molecules change. So there is some sort of chemical reaction between the rock, the oxygen and the moisture, which breaks down the rock. Now, in which three ways does mechanical weathering happen? The first way that mechanical weathering is happening is caused by water that is freezing. So you can kind of imagine where this type of weathering takes place. One very important thing to know is that water is very special, not because it tastes so good, but because when it solidifies and turns into ice, it expands, meaning it gets a little bit bigger when it turns into ice. And the mechanical weathering goes as follows. Step one the water will fill into a crack of a rock. Step two, the water in the crack of the rock will turn from liquid into solid, turning into ice. And step three, as it turns into ice, it expands. The expanding ice is so strong that it can crack the rock a little bit more open. And step four, the ice melts and it turns into water again. And the last step, step five, is to repeat step two, three and four over and over again and eventually crack the rock breaks and this is how mechanical weathering with frozen water happens let's move on to the second type of mechanical weathering the rock crumbles and breaks because of big temperature differences for example in the desert it can be as warm as 40 degrees celsius during the day but during the night, it cools down to minus three. When things get warm, they expand. And when they get cold, they shrink a little bit. This is not always visible to our eyes, but this does happen on a molecular level. And when this happens over and over and over again, at some point, the rock can't handle this growing and shrinking anymore. And it just cracks, it crumbles into many pieces or just splits in two. And this is how mechanical weathering with big temperature differences can happen. The third and last type of mechanical weathering that you need to know is caused by flora, so plants and trees. You might not think of it when you look at plants and trees, but they are actually quite strong. So strong even that it can break rocks. This is how paper beats rocks in rock, paper, scissors. When a plant or a tree root grows into a tiny crack of a rock, it can slowly grow and get bigger and stronger and push the rock from inside out. 
Eventually, this pushing will become so strong, the root of the plant or tree will become so strong that it just cracks the rock open. So, this is how flora, plants and trees cause mechanical weathering. Now we switch over from mechanical weathering to chemical weathering. Now, chemical weathering does not happen from strength of ice or plant roots or big temperature differences. Chemical weathering happens with a chemical reaction. And for this chemical reaction, we need a couple ingredients. First, we need a soft type of rock. Second, we need oxygen. And third, we need moisture, so it needs to be wet. Chemical weathering happens when rainwater and oxygen react on a certain material and on certain rocks, which causes the water to be more acidic. This reaction happens faster in climates that are warmer and more moist. So you can kind of guess where in the world chemical weathering will happen faster. The chemical process that takes place with the water, the oxygen and the rock cause the rock to dissolve. And this is how chemical weathering changes or breaks down the rock. It just dissolves the rock. But not every type of rock is as easily affected by chemical weathering. We know about igneous rock. You know, the type of rock that is formed by solidified magma. This rock is very hard and very strong, so it is not as much affected by chemical weathering. But sedimentary rock, especially those with loads and loads of fossils in them, experience a lot of chemical weathering. Sedimentary rocks filled with fossils have a lot of calcium in them. And when there are so many fossils of sea creatures such as plankton and shell animals, the type of sedimentary rock that is formed is called limestone. This type of rock, limestone, is relatively soft and is very weak against the process of chemical weathering because calcium reacts quicker to oxygen and moist. So when you have a landscape which consists of a lot of limestone, this type of sedimentary rock, the rain and oxygen will have a very heavy chemical reaction with the limestone. It will dissolve large parts of the landscape. This type of landscape made from limestone where chemical weathering has been happening for many, many years is very unique. And this type of landscape is called a karstlandschap. So chemical weathering is very different compared to mechanical weathering. With mechanical weathering, you really have the process of the temperature or the water or the flora that breaks the rock. And with chemical weathering, you really need a chemical reaction between oxygen, moisture, so water, and a type of rock, a type of material. So to summarize everything that we've learned, you now know what weathering is, in which three ways mechanical weathering can happen, how chemical weathering happens, what the difference is between igneous rock and sedimentary rock, and especially limestone on chemical weathering, and how landscapes with limestone are much affected by this chemical weathering and cause the creation of a karstlandschap. And overall, just in general, how climates have an influence on these types of weathering, whether they go quicker or if they can happen or not. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something new today and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.